Yo, what's up everyone, my name is Mad Dog, and welcome to, well, uh, I wouldn't technically say this is a mad theory or an overall, but I just want to have a very good discussion about what's going to happen with the next and final DLC character to Smash Bros. Ultimate. A lot of things have happened ever since Super Smash Bros. Ultimate came by, had those new character DLCs, not to mention the people that got most the hyped was the Sans Me costume from Undertale. I will admit, it was pretty cool too. Yet, I usually sometimes play as him. So, recap, we're going to talk about who might be the final Super Smash Bros. Ultimate character. Don't know if there's going to be more after this. Probably next year we'll have more. What I have here will be a bunch of drawings that I kind of actually did in the past that could be possible Super Smash Bros. fighters. Now, since I'm gonna use them, this might be the best time to have your final thoughts on who that final Smash Brothers ultimate character might actually be. The first character I'll be talking about will be probably everyone's favorite and would always love to be part of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is the one, the only, Shadow the Hedgehog. Everyone has been always asking for Shadow the Hedgehog to come and join the fight over and over and over again. Despite the fact that he's actually an assist trophy, they'll like it him even better as an actual fighter. Mostly because they want him to be an Echo Fighter, just a bit like Sonic the Hedgehog, since like, you know, he's the decoy of Sonic the Hedgehog. Same moves, same powers, well, sort of, despite using the power of Chaos Control. Obviously, Shadow's final smash could possibly super shadow by any chance. Also, his skins could actually be one of the shadow androids from the Shadow the Hedgehog game multiplayer mode. As you can see in my drawing and a couple of images. Or of you folks would probably know other powers that Shadow have, like Chaos Spear or Chaos Oblivion, all those sorts of powers. Also to the fact that Shadow doesn't run, he actually skates on his air boots. Or air shoes. Anyway. Well, that's a fine way to kickstart this video. Now for the next character on my list. Talkman. Talkman is actually the first Pac-Man World villain from the game Pac-Man World uh, on the PS1. Who technically he's jealous of Pac-Man and wants to become the real Pac-Man. So when his ghost army actually kidnaps him, Pac-Man actually tries to f get them back on Ghost Island. When fighting him in the game in Pac-Man World, he kind of does fight the way how the real Pac-Man works. Throws pack dots butt bounces, and dash rolls. However, Pac-Man in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, he never actually does those moves, which is kind of disappointing, which I'm hoping that Talkman would be actually be able to do those moves that he actually used to do on the PS1. God, I hope so. The skins for Talkman are pretty much basically from the original ghost, Binky, Inky, Pinky, and Clyde, and that grey one over there, that's actually Oran, who's actually the creator of Talkman, and the one who's actually controlling it. Those who do know, fantastic. Those who don't know, spoiler alert. There, you ruined everything. Nobody loves a ghost. <laughs> Okay, now most of you people will probably get annoyed about this, who the next character would actually be. I actually kind of picked Toad. And Toadette, for that matter. I mean, come on, you gotta really feel sorry for the guy, right? Maybe it's not another time for him to actually fight instead of get thrown by Princess Peach. Or Princess Daisy, by that matter. The reason why I also picked Toadette in this one as well, because, you know, they are kind of like the same character, but just, you know, one's male, one's female. I mean, come on, it's that obvious. Oh, and I also try to make the Toadette's one also look a bit like Daisy and Rosalina. Time to put on those hats on, you know what I'm saying? Transform into... You, well, you know what I mean. Most people have always been focused on the Balzat one. To think of a sm final smash for Toad or Toadette, you could probably use those bouncy mushrooms, like the one that Toad used in um, Mario Sports Mix. Simple as much, but you know what, it shouldn't be that much of a bad idea. This next character will sure be able to be interesting for you guys. The next one is Nitrous Oxide. Well, 
the little Terra Vermin has finally collected all the trophies to become world champion. What took you so long? Now we prove who the fastest driver really is. Nitrous Oxide may be one heck of a racer, despite the fact that I'm cheating, but his use of weaponry is out of this world. And now that since he's actually got a remade version of himself, I would definitely recommend using that. I made sure this one may be fine as well, but no, 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 not this one, not that one. Especially not the PS2 model. It's disgusting. This I like the most though. I didn't technically come up with enough skins, cause like, well hey, you know, this was from a long time ago. But hey, you know what, you could probably use the other skins that are based on Crest Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Star Oxide, Hot Rod Oxide, Shower Oxide, Heavy Metal, Water Metal, and Beetle, and all that sort of stuff. His final smash though, I could actually think of the Velo Mask. Don't know if that's quite accurate, but hey, ever since he lost, he'd actually joined forces with Emperor Velo. So I guess that kind of makes sense. Now let's talk about Kemic, aka Magic Koopa. She's technically from a Mario game, but is mostly actually best based on Yoshi games. And you probably know a couple of them, Yoshi's Island and Yoshi's Woolly World or something like that. There are like only like four, actually no, five skins by any chances, because I kind of looked those up. Well, not really. These are technically the skins that were basically from Mario Edition to Puzzles and Dragons on the 3DS. Each with a different elemental power. Dark, light, water, wood, and fire. However, I'm not that quite sure if that's going to be possible trying to give the, each of these skins specific elemental powers. Final Smash could possibly be transforming into Camilla or summoning Camilla, like how Piranha Plan actually summons Petey Piranha. If you don't know who Camilla is, she's actually the leader of all chemics. A boss from Super Mario Galaxy number one on the Wii. And I will admit, that will be pretty cool if, by any chances, you could actually transform into Camilla or summon it as a final smash. Ever wanted to get the feeling that you always wanted to play as Super Sonic, like, forever? Without having to collect a specific amount of rings? And just fly through the air whenever you want? Well, that's exactly what I want for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. If there's any chances that, Super, that Sonic can actually become Super Sonic as a separate character, like, forever, now that will be something you wouldn't see every day. And technically speaking, I'm pretty sure that the final smash at this point would actually then be hypersonic at this point. But a couple of weird skins for this one. And there's also Dark Supersonic for that matter. The Red Supersonic actually could be a possibility. If, you know, some people would usually like to see a, a Fire Supersonic or something like that. You know how they always deal with their fan-made transformation characters. What happens if you actually want to put those two awesome legends... Sonic and Shadow, and turn them into one entirely new character. Yes, I'm talking about Hyper Shattic. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that Hyper Shattic himself is actually a fan-made character to the entire Sonic universe. But come on, wouldn't it be freaking awesome to actually have the power of two hedgehogs into one character? Just freaking becoming the most powerful thing in the entire world. Okay, that might be over-exaggerating, but still. At this rate, I have no idea what kind of s Final Smash would that kind of be for Hyper Shattuck. It is like literally the best thing you could ever come up with. Let alone, I really actually don't care if you can even put Silk Doom, Eon, or Nazo from my or take or perspective. It'll just be an awesome brawl of hedgehogs around the corner. Next Sonic character that you'll be likely to be pleased is the one and only Metal Sonic. Metal Sonic is Sonic's duplicate created by Dr. Eggman after all, and also he can copy every single one of Sonic's moves. Kind of like of another Echo Fighter, just like how I said for Shadow the Hedgehog from the very beginning of this episode. I also wanted to actually have Neo Metal Sonic as a playable character as well, but not technically as a final smash, but like a skin for the character as well. If that's not possible, then fine, make him in the freaking Final Smash AI whatever. I was also hoping more in the lines to also have like, you know, Metal Madness or Metal Overlord as the Final Smash. If you can actually put two of these separate forms of Metal Sonic together. Now I would assume that you folks would actually like to see this particular character join the fight as well. 
Crash Bandicoot. Who's been living the high life for the PS1, 2, 3, and 4, all the way to becoming a remastered character for all those years. Finally, maybe he could finally have a chance to actually join in the game. And the skins that I created, well, they're kind of a bit similar to a couple of the skins in Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel, which I kind of would like that, by the way. Hey, like the blue hyena, this one could be the chipmunk, this one could be like the, the pink, whatever, whatever the hell that's supposed to be. And also, Carbon Crash. I would love that. That's a really good skin. His spinning and belly flopping action is the best way to kick things off. Not to mention his Wampa Fruit Bazooka. And his final smash could possibly be Aku Aku. How about Dr. Near Cortex, too? The one and only evil genius. With his plans to eradicate and mutate animals. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe a couple of his moves could possibly actually be his hoverboard, for example, since he loves riding on it so much, and also his one and only gun. Jetpacks? Hmm, possibly. Final Smash should also be another mask, which is obviously Uka Uka. With all that destructive power, no one can get past them. Also, the skins are kind of similar as well, it's just uh, not that detailed. Unlike from Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel, his Cortex skins are actually as pretty much better as my mine's is. Hey, what do you want me to do about it? I mean, I told you, this is from like a long time ago, and I'm talking about these now, for this. Give me a break. Anyone who's a big fan of the undead, I can assure that this character will probably make a good impression. Dry Bowser. Dry Bowser is technically the undead version of Bowser when he's actually dropped inside lava, making to make it return, or he could just be a separate character. Which kind of happens most of the time. He could be possibly another Echo Fighter for Bowser specifically. Don't know about his final smash though. I'm really not that quite sure that a Giga Drive Bowser could possibly work. A couple weapons that you actually might realize if this is of course his blue fireballs. Or a bonerang perhaps. Any other kind of familiar moves like his shell could just probably stay the same. His skins are just basically luminous lights on the insides of his body and also his hair. Didn't want to do anything with his um, bones, if uh, you know what I mean. But anyway, he is my favorite Mario character after all. Next we actually have a Pokemon guest arriving who is actually the one and only Sceptile. Now technically speaking, that Sceptile is a starter Pokemon for Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. From Trico to Sceptile. I don't know what the other one is. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Point is that he's actually not that bad of a character and he is kind of interesting. With all those leafy spikes of his attached to his tail, any other kind of move that he could possibly actually use could be helpful. Maybe another Mega Revolution could actually possibly help. If anyone's actually possibly working on those ever again. What about Ash Greninja? He seems to be capable of fighting. Yes, I know, I know that there's already Greninja in the game. But the only problem is that they actually never put Ash Greninja as a final smash move. Now, if you don't know what Ash Greninja really is, well, technically, if you've seen the series of Pokemon X, Y, and Z, it's actually Ash Ketchum fusing together with his Greninja himself, allowing him to become Ash Greninja. It's this so-called bond phenomenon that actually pulls them together and become one. It would have been great if he was actually a final smash move, but you know what, I'm taking a big risk and say that probably this time you should probably put the transformation as a separate character. However, his final smash move could actually be a giant water shuriken, as if you have actually seen it in any of the series. Now, how about you have a bit of a cosplay with, well, the one and only cosplay Pikachu. Now, don't get me wrong, we have actually have one costume in particular that actually has a Pikachu skin for it. Which is actually Pikachu in the wrestling suit. <clears throat> which is actually about freaking time that someone actually put that in there. Which actually made me very happy when Smash Bros. Ultimate actually came out. But what about the rest of the cosplay Pikachus? Have you actually ever thought of putting, you know, the cool type, then the cute type, the beautiful type, and then we have the smart type? Honestly, it's not gonna hurt to actually put any of those skins in. I don't even care if you actually add these skins onto the, the original Pikachu along that, unless if you're actually gonna put it as a, well, a separate character. 
I know that the skim it. <laughs> I said skim it. I meant the skin limit. So the skin limit is actually like probably like around about eight skins. If there's any possibilities to add like more skins or probably just get rid of a couple, it just wouldn't hurt to do that. Now, I know you're gonna hate me for what I'm about to actually say. Actually, no, don't hate me. Don't hate me at all. But I had this idea when I was almost about to finish doing these drawings, but until it just somehow popped up. Hope you guys don't actually mind about all this. Drum roll, please. It's FNAF. Now, don't get mad at me, alright, but there's a reason why I actually decided all of this. Now, I, I've actually seen a trailer where it actually had, like, the actual FNAF characters being in the, the game. Well, it was a fan trailer, you, but you get what I mean. However, the original characters to FNAF aren't actually that, you know, it's not that sensible. And also, they kind of look goofy, it will probably creep people out. Even if that's what they're technically are, they're creepy animatronics trying to hunt you down. However, the cute versions, if you know, FNAF World is a, a better liking to being a bunch of fighters. They're cute, they're colorful, yet their powers are crazy. You know what I'm talking about, Freddles, Pizza Wheel, Bite. And also, I actually got the, um, the characters that were specifically in the FNAF game so far, which is actually basically the original ones at the moment. From FNAF 1 to FNAF 4, unfortunately, because of, well, there's actually have been, hasn't been any updates for FNAF World for like such a long time. Despite the fact there's actually a new FNAF AR game coming out, FNAF World AR, if you actually ever seen it. And also, Lefty's actually gonna be there, which is great. I'm not quite sure if they will actually have a Lefty fight, because, you know, Lefty actually didn't exist back then. Technically, it's every single um, FNAF character from FNAF 1 to FNAF 2, 4. <laughs> and for some reason, I added in the um, the Ignited animatronics for some reason. Even actually, they didn't really exist because that those are fan-made characters. Oh, and also, I actually managed to put Scott Cotham in there as well. These guys can probably be an awesome bunch. Don't know about the Ignited animatronics though. I mean, it could be a possibility you, if you could do that, but... I'm not quite sure at the moment. Well, I guess I might as well end that episode off for today. So, thank you guys for watching for this video, and if you liked it, please like and subscribe. And tell me, also in the comments section down below, which character do you think is probably going to be the last character DLC for Smash Bros. Ultimate? It probably may not be any of them, in my perspective, but I'm hoping that they actually will. If they choose someone else out of the ordinary, well then, good luck to them. And as always, my name is Mad Dog, and peace out.